cup of tea, Chris. Oh, I love a cup of tea. Is this for me? Yeah. Mmm. I made it specially. Mmm. That's delicious. Tea is my absolute favourite thing. Are you having one? No, no. All for you. I'm purposely making Chris drink lots of tea. Shh, don't tell him. You'll find out the reason later. Now, today in the lab, we're going to be looking at the bit of your body which holds your wee or urine, your bladder. Now, over here, we've got a pig's bladder from the butchers, but it's almost exactly the same as a human one. Your body needs liquid, and it takes it out of everything you eat and drink, along with lots of nutrients. Drink up, Chris. Don't let your tea go cold. Mm. But there's always a bit of waste liquid left over that isn't needed, and that's sent to your bladder as wee. This is what happens when your bladder is full of wee. It can actually hold up to a litre of liquid. That's almost the same as two pints of milk. There we go. If I use the torch, you can see just how full the bladder is. And if you think of how small it was when we started, that's pretty amazing. In the wall of the bladder, there are lots of fibres. And some of these fibres are muscle fibres. That's right, you can actually see the muscle fibres all over the wall of the bladder here. And what that means is that the bladder can withstand the force of more and more tea, I mean we, filling it up. As your bladder fills, it stretches, and sensors in the muscle wall tell your brain you need to go to the loo. Right, now, are you sure I can't get you another cup of tea? I've got Earl Grey, lemon, herbal... Absolutely not. My bladder is sending lots of signals to my brain telling me to go to the toilet, and I do feel like I'm going to burst. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. Hang on a minute. Have you been giving me all this tea for an experiment? How can I put this? Yes. I've been giving Chris lots of tea because I want to use his bladder to show you what happens when we empty it. I'm going to use an ultrasound so that we can see what Chris's bladder looks like now that it's full. Now, what you're looking at here, these top layers are Chris's tummy muscles, and then below here, this big black blob, that's all of Chris's bladder. It's full of clear liquid, which is urine. Now, the reason Chris needs to go so badly is because the sensors in his bladder wall are detecting all the stretching, and this is known as the micturition reflex, the point at which you really, really have to go. I think pretty confidently I can say that I'm about to feel the micturition reflex. All right, go ahead, then. What? Here in the lab? Just this once, on one occasion, you're allowed to pee in the lab, Chris. I think I'd better, cos I don't think I'm going to make it to the toilet. I'm going to hold the ultrasound scanner against my bladder while I'm weeing, so you can see it shrinking as I go to the loo. OK, Chris, let your micturition reflex go. We can see on the ultrasound that Chris's bladder is shrinking, and that's because the muscle fibres are pressing on the bladder, forcing the wee out. God, that's great. And you can't see his bladder anymore at all. Completely empty. So how much did you go? You want to see? Yeah. Wow. So how much is that? About a litre. It's quite a lot. So the amazing thing is that my bladder's gone from being this size to so small that we can hardly see it on the ultrasound. And it's those muscle fibres in the bladder that force all the urine out. But be warned, if you hold in your wee for too long, the muscles in the bladder can weaken, making it harder for it to empty itself. So when the call of nature comes, it's absolutely vital that you answer it. You know, Chris, I really feel like a cup of tea. I think it's your turn to make it. Now, don't forget to warm the pot. And what I'd like, I think I'd like Earl Grey, maybe Jasmine. I think we've got some of that. Ouch! And now to our lab. Oh! Where we do incredible experiments to show you how your body works. So watch this. Just don't try anything you see here at home. Now, this is a real stomach, but it's not my stomach. Whose stomach is it? Well, actually, it's a sheep's stomach, but it's very similar to ours. Now, your stomach is an amazing shrinking, stretching, cleaning machine. That's right. After you've eaten food, it goes down into your stomach, which then mashes it up and cleans it to get rid of any bugs that might be there. Another amazing thing your stomach can do is expand according to the food you've eaten. So if you have a small snack, then it'll stay small. But if you eat a big meal, then it'll get much bigger. And we're going to show you just how much bigger it can get. First, we're going to make a meal of fish fingers, chips and peas. Yum! Now we're going to mix it all up in the liquidizer, just like your teeth mash up food when they chew it. 
And there we go, a nice big jug of fish finger smoothie. Now we need to pour the mixture into the hole at the top where the food from your mouth goes down into your stomach. We've closed up the hole at the bottom too. This is where the food would leave your stomach to go into your intestines to be absorbed. Now, when you eat, you often, along with your food, swallow some air. And when your stomach squeezes, that air gets forced back up your food pipe and comes out as a burp. <coughs> Sorry, Chris. When you get wind at the other end, it's because gas has been produced in your large intestine. Don't even think about it, just keep pouring. So that has got much bigger, hasn't it? Your stomach expands depending on how much you've eaten, but an adult stomach can actually swell up to 10 times its own size. But that's not all. In your stomach, you've got a very powerful acid. It's so strong it kills bacteria and can even change some of your food to make it more digestible. You see, when you get hungry and your tummy rumbles, that's your stomach producing the acid in preparation for the incoming food. In your stomach are parietal cells and they make the acid. So we're going to show you right now how the acid works. This is my sick. It's a mixture of food and acid, so I'm going to sieve the food out and we'll just be left with the acid. You love doing this, don't you? Yes, I do. So if I sieve out the chunky bits of food, I'm left with just my stomach acid. Then I'll add some of this acid to milk and watch what happens. If I stir that, can you see that? Oh, that's disgusting. So the milk has gone chunky, and that's because the acid has made the protein in the milk all clump together. It's called curdling. It's what happens in your stomach every time you drink a milkshake. Oh, I like milkshake. Your stomach acid does this to milk to stop it flowing through your body too quickly. It needs to absorb all the proteins from those crumbly lumps. So this acid is clearly very strong stuff. So why doesn't it dissolve our gut? In your stomach, you've got a layer of thick, protective mucus, but the rest of your gut secretes a chemical called bicarbonate, which neutralizes the acid. So when you're having your tea tonight, just remember how brilliant your stomach is. Ooh, tea? What are we having for tea? Son, you're always thinking with your stomach. <laughs>